Project 5, we're going to work with iframes. Now historically, there's another type of frame, which is sort of what we've got going here in Canvas, that acts like a container for everything that you have going on in it. So there's actually an outside web page holding all the separate web pages in defined areas. So you might have a web page over here, a web page across the top, a web page here, and a center web page, and they're all in frames. So they can potentially scroll separately. I'm not sure that this is the way that page is set up, but it gives you an example of how it could be done. Now, frames have fallen out of favor. And the reason that frames have fallen out of favor is because you can accidentally land in a middle frame. So some, then you might not see the rest of the page and it might all look wrong depending on how you navigate there by a search engine. So if you're going to use the traditional frames, it's typically in an environment that you log into, something like Canvas, where it has control over you. Now the iframe is a good way to embed content from another site. And the place that you'll see this most is with YouTube. So if I were at, well here's, here's an example. This is my website. And if I were to go into, and I'm logged in as me, so this is my website and it's done in Drupal. And if I were to go into edit my Drupal site, and even if you're using a content management system like Drupal, you'll notice I use full HTML tags in here. And so I have iframes embedded for playing my videos. And I copied and pasted that because when I'm at YouTube, it makes it really easy to get that code. So if I go into one of my videos that I've created here and I choose share, I can choose embed and it will just give me the code to copy and paste. And if you change your size, it'll change it in here. And so we've got several different settings that that puts in, the width, the height, the source, frame border, allow full screen. There's lots of options that you can get into, but we're going to keep ours really simple. This is a very, very simple page. We've got our typical heading section. I've done a few different, um, let's look at this in a separate screen. So you can see it's a real short page. So we've got a little bit of formatting going on here. I typically control the font, background color, or um, I might do, and here I've just got the H1 set up. So not a lot going on with the, oh, I've got a closing script tag that doesn't actually belong in there. So you can see that's an error that I get a closing tag when I don't have an opening tag. And it's showing me that in red. That's one of the reasons I like Firefox is it'll point out those errors. But in my body, and I'll see here, it's just iframe one. I have my heading of iframe demo, which you see right up here. And then I have my iframe source. Now the dot dot is because I'm going up a level from my current project. This takes me back to the top level, and then it starts moving down from there. So dot dot takes me to the top level. Project three is in a folder in my top level, and then index.html is the page. And I've set the height to 300 and the width to 400. It's not actually a really good size for this because I've made everything so large, but shows you what that size frame works like. And it automatically puts scrolling in there. You can turn that off, but it's automatically there. I did an iframe of the same size. You'll notice each of these are in divs because I wanted them centered on the page. But I've got another one, and this one scrolls both directions. And you can see, again, I'm just pulling from my other project. This is exactly what I want you to create without the error. And so you will just be creating them to your pages in your work from this week.